Well, it's a Sunday that we call a World Communion Sunday. It's annually observed here on the first Sunday in October to celebrate the unity of the worldwide church. As a symbol of unity, Christians from all over the world come together on this day to confess, to confess Jesus is Lord and to participate in the Lord's Supper. In the 19th century, our disciples of Christ's forebears, Mark Stone, Thomas, and Alexander Campbell, were great proponents of such unity. They believed that, in spite of our different nationalities, our different languages, our cultures, and creeds, this table, the bread and the cup, and the great confession of faith, Jesus is Lord, unites us all. So as a Christian minister, especially as a disciples of Christ minister, I'm supposed to stand behind this pulpit on this day and confidently announce that because we participate in the Lord's Supper, and because we confess with our mouths that Jesus is Lord, we are united. We are in one accord with Christians from all over the world who are sharing in the same supper and making the same confession of faith. It's a great sentimental thought. It's a gushy romantic concept. It sounds like the responsibly religious thing to say on this world communion Sunday. But if I'm truly to be honest with you, morning, and I like being honest. I'm not so certain I'm buying it. Are we really in one accord with the racist Christians who belong to the German National Democratic Party who are seeking to revive Nazism in Germany? Are we on the same page with Christians in Russia and Uganda and Nigeria who are supporting laws that are brutally repressive to the LGBT community? Do we really want to brag about being on common ground with Christians in Jordan and Iran and Syria who have murderous hatred for the nation of Israel? Are we unified with Christians here in our own country who believe that it's not only okay to discriminate on the basis of gender, sexuality, and race, but out of fear and hate, believe it is their duty to God to do so? Are we really at one with the TV evangelists who live in mansions they bought with money donated by the people he swam with? Many of them very poor. And why on earth would we even want to be associated with the Christians of Westboro Baptist Church, of Topeka, Kansas, who protest the funerals of our fallen soldiers? Yeah, if I'm honest with you this morning, sometimes I look at the actions of Christians around the world and even down the street, and I think that I may have more in common with those who do not profess any faith at all. Like us, these Christians confess Jesus is Lord. Like us, they partake in the Lord's Supper. And like us, they may even be partaking today on this World Communion Sunday, this very hour. But they're really nothing like us. When they eat the bread today, it appears to be from a much different loaf. When they drink the juice or wine today, it seems to be from a totally different cup. The truth is that there are many people in this world today who I believe erroneously only confess or claim to be Christian. In chapter 7 of Matthew's Gospel, we read Jesus' words, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven but the ones who do the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not do mighty works in your name? Did 
did we not cast out demons in your name? And you might be able to add, did we not partake in the Lord's Supper in your name? And then I would declare to them, I never knew you. I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. Matthew 7. So I must confess that I really don't want to be united with some who confess Jesus to be Lord and who share this Lord's Supper. Sometimes I think that maybe our unity needs to come from another place. In our making the shift experience that I hope that you're all participating in, this past week we were reminded of these important words of Jesus from John chapter 13. I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you should also love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. In John's epistle we read, Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. And whoever does not love does not know God. I believe God wants Christians around the world to unite today. Not merely around a table or with a confession of faith, but by the love that we have for others. We are to love God as God loves us, selflessly and sacrificially, unreservedly, unconditionally. As the song goes, what this world needs today more than anything else is love, sweet love. But I'm going to be honest with you again this morning. Here's the problem. With all of this, all we need is love, y'all. It makes great music. However, the truth is that the love that we have for others will never, will never unite us, all Christians together. <coughs> for as much as we try to love one another, guess what? We always fall short. A few years ago, I was having a conversation with a, a couple of folks, and I was sharing how much it really hurts me. It hurts my feelings when I learn that people don't care for my sermons and they quit coming to church. One of the persons responded, Oh, Jared, your feelings only get hurt because you love so much. You just care so much. The other, who knew me a little better, said with this mischievous grin, Jared, your feelings are only hurt because you have such a big ego. <laughs> the truth hurts sometimes, doesn't it? The truth is that no matter how hard I try to love others, I always fall short. My ego, my pride, my sin is always getting in the way. And it always will. Thus, as much as I believe Christians around the world need to come together and be united by a selfless love for others, if I am to be honest, I know that is never going to happen. For, for example, it is impossible, impossible for me to stand here this morning in this pulpit and preach love one another and not have some disdain in my heart for Christians who do not love one another. Did you hear the judgmental pride in my voice just a few moments ago? Did you hear it? I heard it. When I arrogantly suggested that we were not united with some Christians, when I suggested that we we're better than some Christians. I sounded like the self-righteous Pharisee in one of Jesus' parables who arrogantly boasted, thanking and praising God that he was not like the tax collector. Luke chapter 18. So the truth is, when it comes to genuinely loving one another as God loves us, as hard as 
as we try, we are always going to fall short. So what is it that truly unites us as Christians? Why are we here having this World Communion Sunday? Why do we have someone come and sing in different languages and pray in different languages to mark this day? Well, let's look again at these words from 1 John. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent His only Son into the world so that we might live through Him. And this is love. Now hear this. Not that we love God. Not that we love others. But that God loved us. And sent His Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. It is not our love that unites us. It is God's love that unites us. Christians all over the world are united by the truth that for God so loved this world that God gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have eternal life. Christians all over the world are united by the great truth that God proves God's love for us that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5. The good news is that this is what unites us as Christians. God loves us in spite of our egotistical love. God loves us in spite of our judgmental love. God loves us in spite of our arrogance and our self-righteousness, and God loves us in spite of our hate. Thus the truth is that we do have something in common with the racist, neo-Nazi, German Christians. We have something in common with homophobic Russian, Ugandan, and Nigerian Christians. We have something in common with anti-Semitic Christians around the world, with hateful and fearful American Christians. We have something in common with the TV evangelists living in their mansions who oppress the poor. We even have something in common with the hateful zealots of Westboro Baptist Church who picket the funerals of our fallen soldiers. We have something in common with our Christian neighbors who believe it is their God-given duty to discriminate against those who are different. And 200 years ago, Barton Stone, Thomas, and Alexander Campbell were exactly right. This table and the confession of faith, Jesus is Lord, unites us all. We are united by this field, representing the body and the blood of Christ, representing the very life of God, lovingly broken and graciously poured out for all people. With all of our sin and with all of our shortcomings, we come together with Christians all over the world, sharing the same bread, and sharing the same cup, and sharing the same grace. We are made one by the great confession that our Lord is Jesus, the one who was sent to save us all. Not because of our love for God, not because of our love for one another, but because of God's love for us. And this is not some great sentimental thought, some gushy romantic concept. And this is not just the responsibly religious thing to say on this World Communion Sunday. This is the gospel. Let us pray for you. God, thank you for proving your love for us. That while we were still sinners, Christ died for us all. Amen. And now as part of the worldwide community of Christians, we remember Jesus' meal with his disciples. 
Jesus sets the table where we dine today. Jesus welcomes and extends his grace to all humanity. People of all ages, of all genders and of all cultures, and of all economic conditions are welcome here. No one can earn a place at this meal. The invitation is offered with an unconditional love. So bring your hopes and bring your history. Bring your honesty. Bring your deliberations and your doubts. Participate in this meal this morning with your whole 